I don't judge anybody on a first impression anymore, and let me tell you why. And it's lunchtime. I love that I'm not eating from my garden anymore. I have chicken salad that I made with rotisserie chicken. It's so good. Mm. Fresh onion and dill from the garden. So a little bit of background. I was always a performer and a singer in junior high and high school. I love to sing so much. I even made third chair in district choir. I love performing on stage. I love performing for my church and I would also do karaoke nights. And back in the 90s, karaoke nights, you can win a lot of money. So that was one of the reasons. After high school, when I would perform for people's weddings, I started getting really shaky and like my teeth would start chattering before a performance. I had no idea what was going on. My mom's a nurse, so I asked her and she's like, oh, your potassium's low, just eat a banana. So this continues up until I'm 20 years old. I had a huge promotion at a very young age, cause you know, I'm 20. I worked for JCPenney Optical and I became the district manager of three stores that really needed to turn it around. Well, in that year, we made a million dollars, each one of those stores. You get to have this trip to New York and then you give a speech like me and a couple other district managers. Remember, I don't think I'm shy or have stage fright or anything like that. And it's about to be my turn and my teeth start chattering in my legs and I'm like, oh, it's, you know, I need a potassium pill. I need a banana. Like what's going on? And now it's getting so bad that my hearing starts going out and my vision and I feel like I'm gonna pass out. My boss stepped in for me on stage and the girls around me were like, you're having a panic attack. Just breathe, it's okay. And I was like, panic attack? I had never heard what a panic attack was. I just thought my potassium was low. So basically I was supposed to perform, you know, for churches, weddings, and I was like, forget it. I'm never going through that again. So I'm like, I have stage fright, it's okay. I'm giving up my little career. <laughs> Not that it was much. I get married, have kids. And my husband knows this story, so he's like, why don't you just join the choir in our church? You don't have to do a solo. Just, you love to sing. Why don't you do that and just kind of dip your toes in the water and see how you do? Also have a local apple. I joined the choir. I really try to stay under the radar. And of course, somebody was like, wow, you have a really nice voice. Why don't you do a solo? And I explained, no, I have terrible stage fright. I can't do it. I don't want to have a panic attack. Months and months of talking me into it. I decide to sing two lines, two lines only, okay? You could still see my husband in the audience with because we had one of those camcorders. No, we didn't have the phone. Holding my little daughter, Lily, and like ready because he was like, I can't believe you're going to sing. I'm getting it on film. Before church starts, I hear like this mumbling, like she's here, she's here. We're just going to call her Jen. By the way, she knows this story and I am going to tell her that I told it on my so I asked what's going on and everybody says Jen's back in town she used to go to our church she's like a really professional singer she sings like opera like she's amazing she's so great with everybody and everybody was just so excited so they were like she's just gonna join and right before we go on she comes right to my ear and she's like hi I'm Jen um just so you know I sing really loud and I'm sorry if I overpower you right off the bat I'm like what comes to my solo I'm doing okay I'm not afraid at all I go to sing, and don't you know, she just starts singing my solo. I mean, it was only two lines, but she just starts singing away. My husband's like, I mean, I sang along, but there was no sing. I mean, her voice is amazing, and it does sound like she's singing in the off. Mind you, I'm a Sunday school teacher. I go to church every Sunday because she is coming to the church now because she moved back in this area. Every time I see her, yes, this is why I'm doing my prayers, I'm like, <sighs> My husband's like, Tara, you can't, you can't give somebody a dirty look. The hate that I had in my heart for her was just crazy. She would walk by in her boots and her skirt. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I, I think back and I'm like, how immature was I? Cause to me, she ruined my shot of getting over being, yeah, I don't like her. I avoid her at picnics. I avoid her at social hour. I do not want to see this woman. And my friend told me, because we were teaching Sunday school, she's like, hey, Jen's going to come down and she wants to sing to the kids. She has her guitar. And I'm like, oh, does she? Does she have her guitar? And you're a mom and you have kids. I hope you can relate. If somebody is good with your kids and genuinely cares for your kids, like that is just the ultimate. It's so I'm nice. I'm cordial because remember, this is a one-sided beef. She has no clue that was my solo. She has no clue that I'm just like giving her a dirty look in church all the time. 
every time she comes down, she's so great. She gets the kids, you know, singing and participating. She does even like a little skit during church and I'm still mad. I still don't like her. I don't show that around my kids, but my husband knows because anytime she walks past, I'm like, mm. my husband sings too. So they start doing some things in the choir and she would always say like, I'm just here to make your voice sound better. I'm your backup singer. And she always let him shine through, you know, and I'm starting to like, you know, cause my first impression was I'm a snob. I'm a better singer than you. And I'm going to outshine you. That's how I felt. And I just could not like let it go. But my kids just loved her and she loved my kids. And she was just such a nice, genuine Christian woman. She is by far one of the nicest people I know. And she's also a pastor at her own church now. So that should tell you like my one-sided beef. So I told her about this at a picnic one time. I'm like, you know, I hated you. Right. And she's like, what? He, I don't think anybody hated me. I'm like, well, I freaking hated you. And let me tell you what you did. And so I start telling her and she's like, I had no idea. Please sing. And I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. I still wasn't fine. I'm totally fine now. But I always say first impressions are always true, but they really are not because like I said, she's a great friend of ours and I really wish I wouldn't have had a one-sided beef with her. Not to leave it on a sad note, I know everybody's going to say, oh, you should sing, you should sing on here. Quite honestly, I can hold a tune, but my voice is just not in, you know, practice anymore. I don't do voice lessons. I'm not trained anymore. I'm older. My voice has changed. So I have recorded myself and listened and I'm like, Ooh, it does not sound good anymore. So again, I can carry a tune, but, um, just to give you an example in church, just recently I started singing and sometimes I just let go. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sing. And my husband so sweetly goes, oh, are you taking voice lessons? Like the kids, you sound so good. And I clammed up. I'm like, boop. And I almost started having a panic attack. I just can't have attention for that. But I could be on Facebook and talk to like, you know, thousands of people. I don't get it either, but I never, I don't like panic attacks. I don't know who does, but definitely first impressions are not always right. <laughs>